Hello everyone and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program 1.6 with Kerbalism. In this episode we begin with our Jewel missions and we'll probably be sent, spending a lot of time with them, getting them into orbit around Jewel and then doing science if communication holds out. <laughs> and it's pretty tenuous right now. Other than that we need to bring back our Ike mission to fulfill the Explore Ike contract. I don't think we'll bring it back all the way to Kerbin yet but we'll start on its way. And there's a possibility of getting our Drez scanner into orbit around Drez. But for now, we focus on this, the dual orbital scanner. And, uh, well, power is good, at least, even though it busted one of the solar panels. Uh, and we'll see how it does. We can probably do some science here. Uh, indeed, high over dual, we haven't done this science. Pressure scan and radiation scan. So, science right away. That's good. We're going to need that. And we are approaching Tylo. Now the dual system lander is right behind us and we have to pay special attention to that because it's communicating through this. It doesn't have enough communication otherwise. Our signal strength is down to 3% already. Uh, 2%. I don't know, maybe I should just make orbit around Tylo. That'll at least get it here. It's possible if we take a look outside here, I mean, further away. I mean, it's possible that Kerbin will eventually come to a position that's closer to Jewel instead of on the opposite side of the sun, and at that point, it'll be easier to communicate. But maybe we can do this whole lathe swing by. I mean, if there's a place that really needs uh, one of these orbital scans, it's Tylo. It's tough to land and lift off from Tylo without uh, using in situ resources. Obviously not impossible, but I mean, I mean, just a little bit tougher than some of the other moons or any of the other moons, really. Well, Lathe, it depends. Depends if you're doing air breathing things. But landing is easier because the atmosphere can slow you down. Let me just quickly check the... Okay, so no new things on the science instruments. I mean, it won't be hard to re-encounter Tylo, so you might as well try the swing by of Lathe. On the other hand, the swing by of Lathe does seem to shoot us out of the system. We'll have to be careful about that. Okay, time for some Tylo science. Temperature scan. Pressure scan and radiation scan are all good. That's high over Tylo. We should get low over Tylo. Well, I don't know, about 216 kilometers, but I'm planning to bring it back over to Tylo anyway. Delta V we have, that's fine. It's the communication that I'm worried about. Okay, but, yeah, this is near Tylo, good. Oh, we've lost communication. Oh, I hope it's just Tylo blocking the way. Oh, okay, yeah, it was. Whew. All right, uh, signal strength 2%. What is, oh, uh, the dual relay is communicating through us? It's supposed to be the other way around. Okay, but we have to pay attention at dual system lander. Let me add the alarm for the lathe encounter. And we'll pop on over to this. Now this is the most troubled mission. Power-wise, it's okay. Or was this the most... No, maybe this wasn't the most troubled mission. <laughs> I'll take it back. No, this is fine. It just needs communication help. I don't know why. I mean, it showed a line... Okay, no, it's got a, the communication back. All right, so we're encountering Tylo with this, and this definitely, well, actually it could probably land on Tylo. Uh, that's a little bit tough to say. Hmm, it might actually have enough Delta V for that, but I think I would rather have it go off to Val or something. Yeah, it could probably do more than one biome on Val. Communication willing, of course. 
The problem is we didn't put the gravity scanner, the gravioli on these. We just unlocked it. So we can't do too much duplicate science here. Okay, we're actually going to have to pay attention to the orbital sciencer again. So I'm going to add an alarm for the SOI change as it comes out of Tylo SOI. And uh, actually, I would like Tylo periapsis just in case. Okay, back to the orbital sciencer. There's got to be a lot of jumping around in this episode, let's face it. And every time I have to make sure they're oriented properly to the sun, that's fine. There is Jewel. We're going to... We, well, actually, we have already passed by Jewel. Darn it, we didn't get the close-up of Jewel. I wonder if there's any additional science inside. No. Um, maybe if we had gotten some science at Periapsis, that would have been good. But we did not. We are flying by a lathe here. Um, we need to correct our orbit so that we fly by Lathe in the right way. That's a bit of a pain. I should have done this earlier. Very expensive. All right, well, well that doesn't seem like it's going to be easy either way, so we're going to try and make orbit around Lathe. Or is that good enough? Maybe that's good enough. What's happening here is we're actually encountering Lathe twice. Mm, but that inclination is going to be a killer. But maybe at Apoapsis we can fix our next encounter with Lathe so that it can straighten our inclination out. I don't know. Or we could just make orbit around Lathe. It's tough to decide. I mean, that's not a bad thing. Wow, look, uh, Kerbin, Eve, it's a little constellation of lights there, and there's Moho there. More lights than I would expect, there's, uh, I don't know what's going on there, why so many little dots. Maybe Minmus and the Moon and Gilly, but still, it looks more like the Pleiades than just two planets and their moons. Let's get some lathe science while we can. So the standard high over lathe science. And I'll pass on orbit for now. We're going really fast. There's lathe. Wow, that looks much more dynamic than usual. There's stuff going on there. It's like there's cities or stuff, something. Or really... Glowing algae? I don't know. Anyway, we got near Lathe. So good science. Okay, we'll just wait until Apoapsis to actually plot it. So that's eight days. Quite a while. Dual system lander then. Okay, so Tylo Periapsis. Just out of curiosity, how much would it take to make orbit around Tylo right now? We, you know, we're probably not going to even have communication. Uh, about a thousand. I mean, it, it certainly has the Delta V to actually land on Tylo. Thrust to weight ratio, barely. Yeah, right at periapsis, we're going to lose communication. So the question is, is this already low over? No, it is not. Oh, wait, there's alternate communication. Good, good. We're communicating through the orbital sciencer at Lathe. And also through the dual relay. So good times. Things are working out properly. Oh, we've already done near Tylo. So that doesn't matter. Um, should we make orbit around Tylo? No, you know what? Our our surface velocity is 3,108. No, I don't think we actually have enough delta V. I take it back. 
We'll we'll try something else, maybe Val or something. That is way too. Exp I, yeah, I don't think we're gonna be able to make that. I it, it certainly takes at least three thousand one hundred meters per second, but then you have to account for its thrust to weight ratio and having to angle up and take time to do the burn. The burn time for the stage is three minutes and fifty one seconds. Uh, it's really close. And I think with this much delta V, we'd be better served trying to land on like Val or something. And we're not in a bad position to do that. So executive decision time, we will move on to Val. And how, let's see, we'll, we'll make a maneuver at Apoapsis to see how best to hit Val. Set that as our target. There we go. We've got a Val encounter. Very easy. And I mean, that will result us in us getting to Val fast. So we'll have to burn off more orbital velocity. So that's not great, but it's okay otherwise. So I'm going to add that alarm. And that's actually the next thing we need to do. So that's fine. We will focus on this. Reaction wheel malfunction on Dres scanner. Okay. The thing about real life reaction wheels is that there's a separate one for each axis. So you could work with just two axes. And so you'll often see that one of them fails and then the other two still work. That's a little bit more convenient than somehow all three of them failing at the same time, which basically is what's happening with that reaction wheel failure with the Dres scanner. Okay. Now when's the encounter? Six days. Let me make sure it's a good encounter. It's a little bit off, but it'll give us the opportunity to land where we want to at Val. It takes about the same delta V to catch around Val as it was looking to take at Tylo. About a thousand. Okay, we will add that maneuver and back to the dual orbital sciencer. The dual relay hasn't even come in yet. I don't know, it's taking its own sweet time. Okay, so now I was gonna try again to encounter Lathe. It looks like maybe it's not this go around, but the next one. I guess it's in a tighter orbit, but the inclination doesn't improve by that much. Maybe we should just try and aim for Val instead. Get all our assets around Val, is that a good idea? Well, I sort of like Val. <laughs> or maybe this should uh, try again for Tylo and get into orbit around it this time. Well, there's the encounter. But it's gotta be 77 days. Well, here's another one of those Tylo encounters that leads to another encounter with something else, a Val encounter this time. But this is in 96 days. Ah, uh, okay, well. I guess we've sort of done this to ourselves with this, leaving it in this horrible inclination after the Lathe encounter. But then... Re-encountering Lathe seemed to take less time. Well, <laughs> now, now I see that Lathe is actually flattening our orbit and I'm reconsidering. This is just great. Well, anyway, we're certainly going to do this burn first, three days. And we'll see what that gets us after I do this. Make sure that we are not getting into the atmosphere of Jewel. We are not. And let's see what happens. So this is the next thing to do. <laughs> this is getting complicated. So we pass by Leith, we pass by Leith again, and then we're getting close to Tylo here. Well, I like this getting us into a closer orbit. That's much better. So we'll probably do this burn at Periapsis before hitting Leith. And let me make sure that does not hurt our Leith situation. No, it just uh, shifts us over a little bit. Okay. Okay, back with the dual system lander. We are going to capture around something finally. 
and this time it is Val. So there'll be new science coming in from that. Still have to watch the communication lines though. Now there's a lander, so we don't need to be in a polar orbit. This orbit will be fine. Oh, power is diminishing. Let me see. It's just probably we were on the nighttime side. Uh, my math says that we have enough power to get to periapsis. And we're recharging anyway. Communication is good at periapsis. We should start burning now. Okay, that stage is just gonna be floating in dual space. Separation and ignition. Ooh, do we not have a, uh, we should have a little reaction wheel on here. It's not glowing red or anything. Oh. Is one of the engines bad? One of the engines is bad. I'll shut down this one then. The gimbling of the spark engine helped though. Uh, really, we don't need the ant engines on at the same time as the spark. I mean, they're not that bad on efficiency. But I think we can just go with the sparks. They were just a backup system. We needed a lot of backup engines though because this still wants to land. And, of course, six-way symmetry is sort of what this this is built around. Hence the extra landing legs. Okay, let's see. Well, I mean, if we land over here, anywhere over here, we'll still be in communication. You can see the line going back, assuming that line is not lying to us. Nope, that is the direction of Kerbin. So yeah, and this will be good because it's the daylight side. So yeah, let's aim to land somewhere over here-ish. Signal strength 1%. Well, we better get on with it then, huh? So mountains. Hmm. <laughs> uh, can we get a different biome except for mountains? You know. Highlands, mountains, midlands. Midlands sounds okay. But there are these sort of lakish areas showing us getting there. Let's get a little bit further in. Lowlands. I'll take lowlands. We can hop on over to the mountains or whatever later if we need to, but we'll try for this stretch here. I think just for safety's sake, I'm going to retract the solar panels. Let's hope I remember to extend them again. And. Uh, the the whole reaction wheel thing isn't as good right now as I'd normally like. Anyway, uh, up, 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 stop bouncing. All right, that'll do. Okay, come on, Val, you have gravity. Really? Whoa, 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 whoa. All right, fine. As long as it counts us as landed. Okay, we got that. I don't know why we're sort of hanging out off to the side here. But maybe that'll make it easier. I think the direction we want to go is northeast. If you want to hit another biome as easily as possible. So let's go... Yep, let's go that ways. But... We're currently over highlands, though I swear the stuff ahead of us looks more like highlands than this does. This, shot, this ought to be midlands. Oh well. Okay, we have landed. This time it is not tilting awkwardly. And... More science. From the highlands. I don't think we have enough Delta V to hop on over to something else, so I'll just extend its solar panels to make sure it has enough power to finish the transmissions. Uh, it has queued, and it has quite a lot queued, I think. Yeah, look at all that. So it has to do all that, but uh, despite... I don't know what malfunctions it has on here, but it's fine. It's, it's a good little lander. It has done its thing. Uh, two landings on Val. And we can be satisfied that this, at least, is has completed its mission. Yep. Lots of <laughs> messages. We, we have barely any communication. 1%. We really are stretching it here. 
Okay, and now for something completely different, our Ike probe. So this has to return to Kerbin to fulfill the Explore Ike contract. And we've got a problem because its parachute has malfunctioned. Now we need to get into orbit around Kerbin, have a Kerbal EVA to it, slap a new parachute on, and then bring it down. I think is the best way to go because we still want to bring it back to the surface of Kerbin. I don't know if uh, it'll have any problem with the fact that uh, we slap a new parachute on to do that, but we'll see. I sort of underestimated, or sorry, I overestimated how much Delta V we needed to actually get back. So this is a lot easier than I thought. Um, we need 235 meters per second to break orbit around, oh, we need to go back here. A break orbit around Ike and then we need to do a burn over here to exit. Um, unfortunately, breaking orbit around Ike, we get tossed into this weird orbit. That was the best I could do. So, yeah, we couldn't get into a nice tight Duna orbit with uh, periapsis in just the right place, unfortunately. But um, the exit burn is 554.3 meters per second, and that will get us our encounter at Kerbin, assuming we do at the right time. And then making orbit around Kerbin is just another 600, let's say, and that'll get us into this orbit, which is way lower than the moon's orbit. So that's low enough. Hopefully we could bring it down even further. According to this, we've got 2,317 meters per second. And all of this business is going to cost less than 1,600, 1,500 even. So yeah, we have margin to uh, get it into whatever place we need to for the rendezvous and then deorbit it. At least that's what it seems like, so let's hope for the best. Uh, so parachute is a problem, but fortunately we still have communication. It's 6%. I'm getting used to that. Uh, I'm getting used to seeing that. I don't know if we'll have communication properly at our node point, though. Let's check that. And we do have power, of course. Uh, yes, it seems like we'll have communication at the exit point here. So let us proceed. We should have one goo container with the required information. I, I don't know how. Well, it's, it just says return to Kerbin after being in orbit around Ike. So it does not matter. It's orbit, right? Yeah. Uh, so it doesn't matter whether we bring back science or not. We probably transmitted that already anyway. OK. Here we go. Up, oh, wrong way around. Right, it's backwards. Um, retrograde. Wait, uh, probably this probe core is the right way around. Right way around? No, it is not. Neither thing is the correct way around. That's fine. That's fine. Past self. Okay, the exit burn from Duna took a little bit of adjustment, but we've got it back to where it needed to be. And it's looking good. Nice periapsis there on the Kerbin side. So, we are going to do this in five hours. Heading out from Ike. There wasn't any additional science on here except for the, the mystery goo, so. That's all we've got. We'll definitely have to return. Well, I don't know if we're going to be returning to Ike. Phobos and Deimos might be where we get to if we're lucky. That's going to be a lot harder. OK, completing this burn, we have to be opposite of this. I wish there was an easy way to figure that out, but okay, we're at about 105 degrees, so 285 degrees, and then minus the current pitch, so minus 36, maybe? It looks like we didn't have as much delta V as it promised. We might be in trouble. Yeah, whatever it was reading as far as how much delta V this has, it doesn't have that. And do we even have an encounter right now? Um, it was starting to go up on the delta V. Well, inclination sucks. This is actually the right time to fix that. 
polar orbit. I don't know if that, that's definitely not going to make it easy, but I mean, it's certainly not impossible to get to this, but orbit, we do not have the delta V for. We could use the heat shield to like dip into the atmosphere and aero capture. That's an option. We'll decide that when we get there. So I'm going to make a dummy maneuver here. And who knows? Let me add that alarm. And we'll see once it gets back. For now, at least it's on its way. But yeah, it lied to me about the Delta V. I don't know why exactly. Uh, there is a decoupler here. I guess it got confused. But there's no fuel up here. There's no stage up here. So I don't know why. Okay, anyway, it is what it is. And at least it's on its way back and we have options. So with this, I'll leave this here and we'll go back to Jewel. This Jewel relay is having power problems. I think it's because it's not properly turned. Um, maybe sundown. Probably tried this before. Okay, well, it's, it's got possibilities still. Lots of problems though. So what this is trying to do is to swing by Val and get into orbit around Val, I believe. And it's not a bad price for that, 1,200. Our Val lander took 1,000 to get into orbit around Val and that was after it already captured around Jewel, so. Signal strength 1%. I don't know if we can trust the total delta V down there because of the weird positioning of the satellites. I don't know if that's true or not. What does it say here? I mean, that's probably not true at all either. Okay, here we go. Okay, well, let's try this. That didn't work out right. Um, what has happened? Okay. Oh, this doesn't have communication anymore. Uh, independently, they don't have enough communication. And... For some reason, when I, I, I wanted to decouple this decoupler, but then it decoupled that decoupler as well. I don't understand, really. It's probably because of how I did the interstage node thing. But, yeah, they're doomed now. Yep, there's no communication. So much for the jewel relay. It's the one thing that can't communicate with, uh, with Kerbin right now. Okay, uh, that's unfortunate. But let's proceed with this dual orbital, orbital sciencer then. We've got maneuver in order to hit lathe properly to bring our orbit down so that in the near future we can hit Tylo and do the orbital scanning of Tylo. So let's do this. And maybe I can get low over dual science. We haven't actually done that yet. I like how the surface of Jewel seems dynamic. Can you see it looks like the storms are very active? That's sort of nice. Sort of rippling going on there. Don't remember seeing that effect on a gas giant before. In any game, I mean. Are we low over Joule now? Not yet. Well, then we might not get low over Joule. Okay, so we've got Lathe bringing us back into a nice flat orbit after initially flinging us into a really awkward orbit. And our Lathe periapsis is safe. Okay, so out of Lathe SOI we go. 
And now we'll go to, well, let me plot ahead of time and let's see at Apple Apsis what we can do to hit Tylo eventually. I'm just gonna wait now. Uh, it has possibilities. I'd rather meet it over here, but that's taking too long. 26 days is safely before the Dread Scanner needs my attention. Okay, that looks like a good polar orbit approach around Tylo. And then a capture. Uh, it takes well within our budget, anyway. So, that'll be a note in 27 days. I'll time warp through that. That'll be before the Dread Scanner. Hopefully we'll still have communication. That's another trick. We'll see. Okay, confession, I accidentally time warped right past the initial node. So I've got another one though, and it's not gonna take too much longer. Well, I take it back, it's after the Dres scanner. You know what, uh, at this point I'll save it for the next episode. So, this is gonna try to make, uh, this is going to try to make orbit around Tylo. Our Dres scanner is going to arrive and uh, we'll see what we do after that. We've got a big gap between that and when the Ike Station probe arrives. And there's a Duna window, but then I want to convert to real solar systems, so I don't know. All right, so I'll think about that. And for now, we have done a few things around Joule. So thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.